Shalom friends, I am inside my sukkah on the first day of Sukkot last night. The moon was full and it shouted to me that this is the last of the seven appointments that God established with the Jewish people for us to meet with him. And one of the ways we meet with him is to sit inside the sukkah, this lean-to, this temporary shelter and ponder what it was like for those four decades while the Jewish people roamed, while the Jewish people were not yet in the land of milk and honey. So what do we do today? We read from the book of Ecclesiastes to remember that we are, we are, well, just blowing in the wind. And so that's what I'm going to read today. Maybe I'll read every day during these eight days of the holiday with the noise of Pacific Highway in the background. <laughs> and who knows, at least today it's not raining on us. It has been raining pretty significantly here in Sydney. Um, in Israel, we began uh, praying Mashiv Haruach and Marida Gashem, uh, something about uh, God sending the rain during the rainy season, I want to say enough already. That That's uh, no more rain. Uh, I'm not sure what I would do if I were praying in synagogue just now with that on. But here we are reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 1, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Obviously, this is King Solomon. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanity. What advantage has man in all his work, which he does under the sun? A generation goes, a generation comes, but the earth remains forever. Also, the sun rises and the sun sets, and hastening to its place, it rises there again. Blowing toward the south then turning toward the north, the wind continues swirling along. And on its circular courses, the wind returns. All the rivers flow into the sea, yet the sea is not full. <laughs> Here in Sydney, the, the waterways are full and overflowing all around the region, all around the state, we have floods. To the place where the rivers flow, there they flow again. All things are wearisome. Man is not able to tell it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is that which will be, and that which has been done is that which will be done. So there's nothing new under the sun. <laughs> is there anything of which one might say, see, this, it, it, it's new. Already it's existed for ages, which were before us. There's no remembrance of earlier things, and also of the later things which will occur there will be for them no remembrance among those who will come later still. And that's us. We certainly are come later. That's the reality. I, the preacher, have been king over Israel and Jerusalem. This is King Solomon talking. Let's see, what does that mean? Bring them on video. Maybe that means I get to invite you. <laughs> maybe, maybe you get to share at the same time. And I set my mind to seek and explore by wisdom concerning all that's been done under heaven. Everything that's already been, that's what we do inside the sukkah. We ponder. It doesn't hurt that there are sirens going by, police, and ambulances going by, that I hear the sound of buses and honking. It doesn't hurt for me to ponder life, and in this case, life and death. Here yeah, it's a fire engine. Okay. I set my mind to seek and explore by wisdom concerning all that's been done under heaven. It is a grievous task which God has given to the sons of men to be afflicted with. I've seen all the works which have been done under the sun, and behold, meaning don't miss it, all is vanity and striving after wind. What is crooked cannot be straightened, and what is lacking cannot be counted. I said to myself, Behold, 
I've magnified and increased wisdom more than all who were over Jerusalem before me, and my mind has observed a wealth of wisdom and knowledge. And I set my mind to know wisdom and to know madness and folly. I realize this also is striving after wind, because there's much wisdom, there's much grief, and increasing knowledge results in increasing pain. That's chapter one of the book of Ecclesiastes. And during the Feast of Tabernacles or Chag Sukkot, the festival of the booths in which I'm sitting and others will come and we'll take meals here and we'll sing and we'll, we'll shake Lulav and Etrog. We'll talk about that in days to come. We'll take a longer look at the components of the sukkah itself. But today, first day, <clears throat> Last night, the full moon said, it's Sukkot, and so don't miss it. And when I think about it, it was like an alarm clock going off for me last night. An alarm clock that said, it's time. Now, over the weekend, we, my grandsons and I built the sukkah and established it here in my backyard in Sydney so that we could rest in it. But not just rest and not just take our meals, but to ponder. I want to, I want to ponder the word ponder. Uh, what does that actually mean? Well, that's what the Ecclesiastes, what the preacher, that's what it means, is actually doing. He's pondering, he's reviewing, like Fagan, his situation. He's reflecting on all that has happened, all that he desired. Where's it gotten him? Where has it gotten him? Where's it gotten so here it is. The first thing is the futility of wisdom. And you think, well, wait a minute. No, no, wisdom's good. Wisdom is seeing things from God's point of view. Wisdom is, is uh, not just carrying on, and, but actually processing ideas and making sure that they're right. So what does he say? I've set my mind to seek and explore wisdom concerning all that's been done under heaven. It is a grievous task which God has given for the sons of men, meaning people, to be afflicted with. It says at the end here, because in much wisdom there's much grief, and increasing knowledge results in increasing pain. Really, he's using the words wisdom and knowledge in the same way. And really, when you think about it, the more you know, the more you're responsible, and the more you know, and the more you're responsible, the more you know you don't know. The more you know that you've failed, the more you know that you've not made it exactly right so futility well when you think about it and that's what the, the sukkah is all about it's about thinking about it the jewish people wandered for 40 years we were delivered out of egypt and we took a fairly circuitous long roundabout to get to the land of israel Moses dies, everybody who was over 20 years old at the time of the departure from Egypt, around 1500 BCE, everybody who was an adult, 20 and up, not 13 and up, 20 and up, everybody who was alive in those days, except for two, except for two, everybody died in the wilderness. So we're gonna ponder what those people were thinking in the wilderness, and while we reflect here in the sukkah, while we reflect what God might be saying to us, maybe even through us, we're going to ponder the futility of life. That is, um, everything that people put their hope in, everything that people put their confidence in. Oh, he's a very smart man. Ooh, I'd like to grow up and be like him. Oh, he's a very strong man. Oh, she's a beautiful actress. Oh my goodness, those people are especially good at X, Y, and Z. And we're going to talk about those because that's what Ecclesiastes, which we read every day here in the Sukkah, we're going to talk about all these things that lead to futility. You think, well, that sounds fairly hopeless. Hang in there because the end of the book has a lot of good news. Not the whole book of the Bible, but I mean the book of Ecclesiastes. So hang in there. That'll be well worth getting to. If you want, go ahead and read it for yourself. Read it there in your sukkah or read it there in your lounge room. 
read it wherever you read your Bible or listen to it on your Bible app. I actually listen to a lot of Bible reading while I'm driving. It is especially useful to me to calm me, <laughs> to remind me. And I guess that's what pondering is, is reminding. Mind again. That is, put things back in your mind. What did he say in verse 13? I set my mind to seek and explore. I set my mind. Have you ever set the dial of the thermometer in your apartment or in your house? You turn the dial to 18, 20, 22 here in, well, around the globe. Or maybe if you're in America, you would set it to 68 or 70. And you leave it there because you don't have to keep playing with it. But I have a gas stove. <laughs> and uh, in our gas stove, you know, you set it, and you put the, the pan on there and you're cooking something and you, maybe it's a little too hot. So you have to turn it down a little. You have to, it's not set and forget on a gas stove. You have to keep adjusting. And that's the way I am going to live in these next eight days. Here in the sukkah, I'm gonna mind and remind and re-remind. I'm gonna set my mind today on knowing God. I'm gonna set my mind on doing the things that make him happy. I'm gonna set and reset tonight and tomorrow. So the moon will still be full, whether it shows through clouds or not. Last night, it, it just came through a little bit and I saw it was full and then it went away. And that fullness of the moon was like an alarm clock saying, Bob, it's Sukkot. You built the sukkah. The grandsons built the sukkah with you. You now have to sit in there and do something. What do you have to do? Remind yourself. You set your mind, you set and renew your mind to ponder godly things. Make good decisions. Take a half hour all by yourself and ponder who God is. Take some time to relax and reflect and be thankful to the God who's made you. Those are some of my thoughts on this first day of Sukkot. Do you have some thoughts? You want to share those on the Facebook comments? That would be great. Thanks. Sag Sukkot Sumea. Happy, happy festival of tabernacles to you. Shalom.